Well, welcome Year 12 to this short information video about the IRP. Today's video will be entirely in English um, because the IRP is the same for all the different A-level languages at edXL, so, so everyone can access it. Now, the IRP is the largest part of your speaking exam that is worth the most marks. So it's really important that as we start the project now, you've got a really clear idea of what you're doing, which is why I've especially made this video for all of you. Now, I know speaking exams can be stressful, but the IRP and this section of the speaking exam, this is the pinnacle of your language skills. And this is why you've chosen to study a language at A-level. You'll be so advanced that you'll be having a deep, meaningful, well-researched conversation with your teacher on your research project, which will be something about the foreign culture, which is just what it's all about. This is basically a university task that they've dropped down into A-level, and it's very similar to my finals exam that I did when I was at university. So it is going to be a challenge, but you will be able to speak French or Spanish to a fantastic degree. And for a lot of you, this will be the highlight of your exams and it will give you that feeling of how good you are at speaking a foreign language. But it's a lot of work to get up to that feeling. That's what this video is about today. I'm gonna to go through these four key questions um, to just give you as much information as we can about the IRP so you're clear on what to do and you can start your research after this video. So first, we're going to look at what the project can be about. We're going to discuss all the different things that you can do for this project to see what you know. Then we're going to be looking at what the exam will be like. I'm going to talk through the mark schemes, how it works to give you the feel of what you'll need to do and produce. Then I'm going to go through the mark schemes in real close detail and show you what you'll need to do to get the top grade. So when you start your work, you can have in mind the skills that you'll need to show and the language you'll need to show to get to that top grade. And then finally, and most importantly, I'll show you how to prepare. I'll show you what you need to do to prepare yourself to get ready for this exam. So that's what we're going to work through today. Let's start with the first part. Let's talk about the project and what you can do your project on. So if you're wondering what your project can be about, anything, absolutely anything, as long as it relates to the cultural, social context of France or the Francophone world or, or Spain and the Spanish speaking world, your project can be on anything related to the language you're studying. The only stipulation is it cannot be based on the film or the literature that we study. So students of French, you can't do Latin for your IRP, you can't do Seg de Bille, you're not allowed to do that only. But anything else that interests you about French culture, you can do. Here in the different colour boxes, I've put some previous uh, exams, some previous things people have chosen that got them good marks. So here we've got, Est-ce que les immigrés sont les citoyens de deuxième zone en France? Are immigrants second class citizens in France. That was a really standout IRP that got not that able a student a very, very good grade. Qui sont les gilets jaunes? This, this, like, this is the um, protest movement in France. You can see how varied they are. Look at this one, the World Cup in 1998. What impact did it have on French society? That's a beautiful title. And you can see they're all incredibly different, all on different things. You can do your project about anything that interests you as long as it's not based on the film or the literature. OK, so now you've got an idea of what the titles look like. Let's talk about what the projects can be about. Now here, this is quite this is taking this from the exam board. So it looks quite intimidating when you read through these. Let me break it down and simplify it for you. So your project must be based on a statement that you investigate and you talk about the cultural and social context. That means you need like a key question, like what was the impact of um, the 1998 French World Cup on race relations? How are immigrants treated in French society? That's the statement that you're going to look at. You're going to investigate it, so you're going to read about it, uh, which is your area of interest. And the most important thing is, it's got to be related to the cultural and social context. So when you choose your title and when you get your statement, you've got to always think, how am I going to show my knowledge of French or Spanish culture or French or Spanish society when I talk about it? So that can influence your title. So if you choose something that's not really that relevant to France or Spain, you're not going to get very good marks. So think and keep that in mind. 
So that's the first point. You create a statement like I showed you on the previous slide. Go back in the video if you want some examples of that. Then it says, or the example says, include evidence of research findings investigated independently from a range of authentic sources. That means when you've got your statement, you need to research it and you need to research authentic French or Spanish speaking sources. So you need to look at newspapers, you need to look at magazines, you need to look at online articles, and that's part of your research and your understanding. You're going to investigate your questions. So if you say, are immigrants treated as second class citizens in France? Go and do some reading on it. I'm sure there's studies into it. I'm sure there's newspaper articles about employment and about um, living conditions and so much that will form the basis of your argument. The next bullet point then, enable students to independently contextualise, analyse and summarise findings. That means once you've read your research, which is your authentic sources, your French or Spanish, you need to talk about the context it is in society, analyse it and summarise. Tell us what the article is about. Tell us what the writer is saying about whatever you want it to say and then give your personal opinion. And then the last one really goes into the introduction. It says the last bullet point enables students to identify at least two written sources which they can summarise and give a personal response to in their presentation. I'm going to talk about the presentation next. This is saying you have at least two sources that you know really well, which have loads of arguments that you're going to base your presentation on. And then after the presentation, we're going to talk more generally about your research overall. OK, so let's talk about that two minute presentation just to go through the exam. So the exam is 11 minutes or this section of the exam, the IRP is 11 minutes. Two of those 11 minutes will be your presentation. OK, so in your presentation is very, very tight what to do and how to do it. We'll make sure your two minute presentation follows this. So the first thing you need to do in the first line, you need to outline your statement. Donc cette année, j'ai fait des recherches et j'ai choisi de parler d'eux. Tell me what you want to talk about. What is your statement? Est-ce que les immigrés sont les citoyens de ces zones? Uh, qui était Philippe Etain? Whatever you've chosen, you're going to outline what you think. Then, that's your first thing. You need to give an overview of at least two sources. So you're going to say one article that is particularly important is, and then you're going to reference it and say, in this article, they say one. So your first paragraph, tell me one interesting thing they say. And then very briefly, give your personal opinion. Then the second paragraph, say something interesting they say, and then very briefly give your opinion and then do that for the other article. So your two minute presentation isn't two minutes on what you think, absolutely not, is two minutes on two articles where you summarise the ideas of those articles and you very, very, very briefly say what you think about them. Now, why is it so brief? Because the next nine minutes is the conversation and what the examiner will do. Every time I examine out, I mean your teacher, it will be me or Miss Walker or Miss Alvarez or Dr. Obemi doing this exam. No one else comes in. So then the examiner will take what you've said in your two minute presentation, which you haven't justified. And they'll say, you said this. Why do you think this? Or why do you think that is? Or what did the author mean when they said that? And then you'll need to justify and develop your ideas. So that's what the two minute presentation is about. You go over two sources. And with each point, you want to just link in to the subheadings you will create. So if you're talking about, say, immigration, subheading one might be uh, employment. That it's harder to get a job with uh, a Muslim name, for example, in France. Like factually, that is true. There'll be an article that says that. I know I've read it in one of the IRPs once. So that could be your first bullet point. And then you've mentioned that in your introduction. And I'll say, tell me more about that. What do you think about that? Why do you think this is? What does this show? And that's how we develop for the second part. Let me just go into more detail about that. So part two, as I mentioned, is a nine minute discussion and it's pure question and answer. Your teacher will ask you a series of questions and will make sure we ask you appropriate ones to get to the grade where you're at. So it will push you to your French and Spanish speaking limit. And this is where after school practices with Miss Sayad or whoever you practice with will make a huge 
impact because if you're used to answering a lot of questions and developing your answers then you'll do really well it's all about practice this exam so for the question and answer we'll pick on what you said in your two minute presentation i make notes of questions i'm going to ask when i'm listening to your two minute presentation and then we'll ask you with them and you need to give your responses so it is quite a strange feeling exam for a speaking exam this is what i want you to think of it as Think of it like an essay, like your Sector B essay or your Spanish essays where you make your point and then you give an example and then you justify it. That's what you'll need to do. So I don't want like a sentence answer. If I ask you what something means, I want you to develop it in as much detail as possible with an example, which would quote something you read in one of your articles and then justify it. And then I'll come back at you and say, well, what about this? Well, what if someone said to you that and then you'll have to say the other side and then we'll justify it and that will make it good. The other way to think about it, think you're a lawyer. Yes, you're a lawyer defending a, 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 um, a client, you're a lawyer defending someone, the defendant, um, and I'm going to be accusing you of doing things and you're going to have to argue back in a very academic way that's the way to see this exam it might sound daunting right now at the end of year 12 when you're watching this video but come the end of year 13 you'll be ready for this we get very very good marks in the speaking exam and i'm really happy with how we run it so you will be fine if you do what we say Okay guys, so we've, we've covered quite a lot of ground here. I'm pretty happy with what we've got. We've talked about what the project can be about. I'm happy with that. What will the exam be like? We've gone through the introduction and we've gone through the conversation, the nine minutes. Hopefully you've got a better feel of what it's like. Let's talk about what to do to get a top grade. Let's look at the mark scheme and the criteria. And then finally, we'll look at how do you prepare and what you can do at the end of year 12 in this half term to make sure that come this time next year, you've already done the exam, you're 100% ready for it. Let's move on to the second part. Okay, so it's a very long mark scheme. The first marks you get, 12 marks, are just for the quality of your two minute presentation. Now, everyone watching this video should be aiming for the 10 to 12 box because this is the bit of the exam that you can work hard on, you can learn off by heart, and you can come into the exam with that in your mind, a two minute presentation. So to do this well, it shows you is what I've said already, you need to give a synopsis, which means an overview of two articles and briefly give your own personal opinion and you must talk about French specific examples, ideas and culture or Spanish specific. It's so simple, that's what you need to do. Show you've understood the articles, show the main arguments of the articles and tell us your personal response convincingly but without going into too much detail and that's where your language and, and how you express yourself is gonna be so important. 12 marks are just for the two minute presentation. And then when you start the nine minute section, you're marked out of 12 again. There's two things for you to remember when it comes to the conversation side, and it is this down here. I've tried to like simplify it at the side. It's here, your ideas have to be relevant. They have to be perceptive. And this is the big bit, supported by information, examples, um, references, just like your essays. Make your point, <laughs> show an example and discuss it and to show it. The second thing you need to do, always have a consistent focus on the cultural and social context. Show you understand French or Spanish society and their thoughts. And if you pick a different time frame, say like if you pick something during the Second World War for French or the Franco era during, um, during your Spanish exam, you need to talk about the context at that time to get big marks show you understand French or Spanish society and culture and give loads and loads and loads of examples. That's gonna be a big part. This is your knowledge and understanding of society and culture. You get further marks for your accuracy and range of language. Now we're going to be doing this a lot in your preparation. This is an A-level exam. It's supposed to be as academic as you can make it. So they want complex language and structures. They want mature, academic vocabulary they want a wide range of that academic vocabulary and they want you to sound authentic pronunciation intonation have got to be authentic sounding now that's all down to practice as is this complexity with language every week i'll be giving you 
some key vocabulary to learn to help you develop your speaking. Remember, this is a different type of speaking to what you've done before. This is like an academic presentation. So every week between now and your exam, you can do some work towards that to make sure you can get maximum marks for accuracy and range of language. And finally, interaction. Now, this is one that separates the A's, B's and C's and A stars so clearly. To get the very top mark, you can pause this and read the examiner's comments if you want, but I've tried to simplify them. You have to basically take the lead. You have to be in charge. You have to be in control. All your examiner's doing is asking you questions. You're taking them to what you want to be asked about, and that will be the top candidate. You also need to ask questions back to develop the conversation. Now, this doesn't mean for the nine minutes your teacher will be talking back to you for four. We've got strict guidelines to answer as briefly as possible, but answer questions back. And sometimes attack is the best form of defense if you're not in an argument, but in a debate that you will be. So your teacher will try and play devil's advocate. So if you're saying, the treatment of immigrants is unfair in France. Your teacher can argue the other side of whatever point you put. Um, and that's where you can hit with questions back. Don't you think, though, that this, what would you say about this? And, and that shows a greater conversational aspect. And it also shows your skill as well, because when you're just presenting and, and you're uninterrupted, that's nowhere near as strong a skill as having a conversation and, and, and asking questions, answers and developing. So you need to ask questions and develop it and be so well researched that you have minimal hesitation. There's nothing wrong with hesitation. I hesitate all the time, particularly when I'm speaking French. French people hesitate all the time. It's how they sound. It's how they speak. However, you want to make it natural. You want to make it minimal. You don't want to be hit with a question you don't know the answer and be like, oh, alors je dirais. You don't want that to be caught off guard. If you're well researched and you've practiced a lot, then, then you're not going to have that. You're always going to have the answer. You'll have some hesitation, but you'll be able to hit back with a really good answer. Interaction is key and it's all about those after school practices you get speaking. They're going to make the difference for your interaction. OK, guys, so. This, in a nutshell, is what you need to do and what you need to think about. And when you start your preparation work, I want you to think about these things. Whatever your title is, and hopefully you've got some ideas already, does it focus on French or French speaking world's culture and society? Or we'll just substitute everything for Spanish, Spanishists. Do you have evidence? Are you giving examples? Can you justify in that context? Accuracy and range. Have you got a wide range of vocabulary? Are you learning your vocabulary every week? Are you practicing that every week? Have you got idiom idiomatic expressions? Are you going to your speaking and asking Miss how to say certain things? Are you clear? And then finally, are you spontaneous? Can you maintain a conversation in French? Are you confident speaking in French about this subject? If you practice, you will be at the very start. You're not going to be. Don't worry about that. It's all about the end. These are the three things you need to be self testing yourself every single time you speak or do work on this. Hello, me, Pity. You're right, guys. So, so far, we've covered the first three bullet points. You've talked about what it can be about. We've talked about the exam and we've talked about the mark scheme. How do you prepare then? What are we going to do in this brief half term that we've got to look and to make sure you're ready and to start your preparation, which will continue throughout the whole of year 13? Let's have a look. So, guys, you've got your independent research project booklet. Here it is. Here's like some of the pages copied and pasted below so you can see what you need to do. So Everything you need to do and know is in this booklet. I'm not going to waste your time here talking through it. And in the lessons, I'll be more specific about what you need to do. The, the reason I've created this booklet for you is this. I wanted to break your research down into manageable steps. If we look at it bit by bit by bit for a few weeks, we'll slowly develop your ideas and your learning and your understanding. This is the way to do the research. If you try and do it all at once, you're just going to get too confused. So we'll do a bit every week or we'll look at an article every week to develop you. It's also to drill that academic talk. We talked about the importance of how it sounds. Every week you've got a memorised some vocab and you're going to have to fill it out in French. So it's really testing your vocabulary. 
If you do this every week, by the time it comes to the exam, these structures will be in place. You'll use them, you'll be used to them. It's also to support the lessons. The lessons are going to be very different. All year you've had me talking and, and, and telling you about the information for year 12. That will start again, but for IRP, it's student-led lessons. I do very little, I'm happy to know. So you have to come into the exam prepared and you will present to the class what your research is and, and, and talk about it. And the class and I will ask you questions about it. So the lessons are really student-led. When you're not presenting yourself, you're going to listen to other people's ideas and you're going to be asking questions which will help you because you're all doing this together. You will listen to other ideas, you'll see other tactics and you'll be able to learn a lot from each other. And then finally, this booklet is to provide you with the structure for your presentation and subtitles. It's to help you organise your lives and everything you need to know to make sure you're ready for next year because this is a huge amount of work. But if you do it, it's so worth it. This is one exam for a level that you can really prepare for and guarantee you'll do well so that's what's about i hope this video has been useful if you've got any questions big or small don't be shy to just email me even spanishists um please feel free to email me and ask about the irp we can help you out right guys thank you for listening i hope this has been helpful au revoir